Welcome back to another Monster Hunter tutorial. Today we are going to actually be talking about my main. This is going to be the Insect Glaive, and this is a very unique weapon. It has two different things that set this weapon aside from the others. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So you notice right off the bat, we actually have a gauge on the top left, and then we actually have a bug on our arm. So this is a pull arm style weapon, and you'll see there's not a whole bunch of attacks that we can do right now. So that's a rising slash, reaping, and a double slash. And then we can throw in a B, wide sweep, overhead smash, and that's the end of that combo. Leaving slash, overhead. So hitting B will do a wide sweep, overhead. Hitting forward in B will do a leaving slash. And that is also going to be the same attack if you are moving forward, it'll do a leaping slash. So, the first part of what makes this weapon pretty cool is the Kinsect. So this is going to be a little bug that you can send out, and it will gather extract from different parts of the monster. So we don't have different parts of a monster in here, instead we have small barrel, large barrel, and the post. We're going to hold down left trigger or whatever your usual clutch claw aiming is. And then to access our clutch claw, we're actually going to put right stick in. And then I can access the claw and the slinger from here. So right stick to undo that and aim with the consent. So let's go ahead and talk about our buffs really quick. As you can see up there in the top left, I already have orange buff, and that is going to be a defensive buff. So we have to aim with our consect. We're going to send it out into a small barrel, and we now have orange buff waiting for us. So we can hit B while aiming to recall. This is going to be a buff that we generally extract from a monster's defensive parts. So it's going to be the body, the tail, maybe sometimes the wings. And this is a buff that is going to increase the defense by 5% and add knockback resistance. So this is going to last for 150 seconds. That is a little bit over 2 minutes. And now let's look at our red. So if we go ahead and hit the post, this is going to be not an attack boost, but it is going to be some different animations for our attacking. So as you can see, I can throw in a lot more attacks now than I could before. And if you hit back and B together, you will be able to dodge slash. So after our tornado slash, which is going to be one of our ending B attacks, we have to reset. So we can leaping, tornado, and then we can hit Y and keep going. We can evade backwards, or we can vault. So I'll show you guys vaulting here soon, because that is the second unique piece of this weapon. But let's go ahead and keep up with the buffs. So... Red buff is going to change the attack patterns we have. This is going to be, again, from offensive parts of the monster, like its head, its arms, and so forth. I think the only guaranteed spot for this is going to be the head of monsters. This is just going to give you different attack patterns that are a little bit stronger, and this is going to last for 90 seconds. So, where things start to get interesting is where we throw in the white buff. So, if we take a large barrel, this is going to be the white buff for us, and this is usually from a monster's mobile parts. So, it's its legs, its wings, and some monsters do have it on their tail. So, let's go ahead and hit white buff, and you can see I now have white. So now I have white and orange. So this is actually where things start to get interesting. White on its own lasts for 120 seconds, and again, it's from its mobile parts. And it increases the hunter speed and the height of our vaults. So on its own, it does a little bit of movement for us. But then when we start to pair it with the other buffs... So with white and orange, I actually have a 10% defense increase now instead of a 5% and it already has the knockback resistance on it, so we're going to be moving faster and now have 10% defense increase. So, when we throw in red with white, which I'm not going to do right now because there's a special effect for all three of them together, if we did red with white, we would have a 10% attack increase along with the not-so-boring attacks that you can see me doing here. So, let's talk about all three of them. All three of them is going to be your triple buff, red, white, and orange. So this is going to increase your attack up to... 15% and you're going to have the 10% defense boost still and this is actually all together going to last for 90 seconds so when we put that in we can now recall and now we have the three buffs that we need to to use this weapon so again red buff is attack animations from its offensive parts of the monster like a head the white buff is a mobility booster from the mobile parts of a monster like its arms and wings and the orange is going to be a defensive boost from the defensive parts of the monster, like its wings and body. So the last buff that we actually cannot see in here is going to be a green buff, and that is going to 
usually be on the tail of a monster if it's available. All it's going to do is you send it out and you recall it and it's going to heal you a small amount. The healing isn't super efficient, but it is there if you want it. And you can actually increase how much you are healed by the healing level in your Kinsect. So as you can see, my healing level is only 5. It's not going to do much. But my speed is 20. And speed is actually what I'm going to be going for for Kinsects. But we can get into Kinsects later. So let's talk about the second part that makes this weapon unique. So you'll notice if I hit trigger and A, I will vault into the air. You have a few different options from here. So this is going to be something that is incredible for mounting monsters, which I will get to in another video that's a guide on its own. So when we are in the air, we can now evade. So this is a movement we can actually do previously, but we can now evade. This does iframe just like if you were evading on the ground to avoid attacks. This does let you move through it if you time it right. So our Y attack is going to be a downward falling slash, and our B attack is going to be an advancing slash. And the cool thing about B is if we take it to the monster and we hit the monster with our B attack, we can vault up four times, and on the fifth it will send us into the ground. As long as we have the stamina to keep up with this attack, it will vault us all four times, otherwise if we miss this attack, we will go into the ground like that. Like I mentioned before, white buff is going to make our vaulting a little bit higher, but that's not super important right now. We're going to look at our attack. So as you can see, we can still evade whatever direction we want to. What we can do is now helicopter. So this is going to be your vaulting Y attack, and this is going to do a decent amount of damage as you can see. Now we have our B attack, which you can see is not vaulting us back into the air unless we hit the final attack. So let me see if I can actually do that. So there we are. One, two, three, and four, and now we will go back into the ground. So these attacks are going to do some pretty good aerial damage, and in my experience, I don't know if there's any actual truth behind this, but I always have better, but I always find it a lot easier to mount a monster by going on it and hitting my jumping slash, my helicopter. This seems to be the attack that gets me to mounting the quickest, but that doesn't mean you can't mount by doing the B attack. So with all that out of the way, you can now... Go experiment, put it together some of your own combos because this weapon does have a lot of them between the red buff and the base attack. And let's talk about the Kinsect for a minute. So the Kinsect is actually going to be a different piece of equipment on its own. So if we go in here, go to our weapon, and then move over to the final page, you'll see the Kinsect information. So let's talk about the attack types. There's Sever and there's Blunt. Severing means you can cut tails with it, and a Blunt means you can knock it out. Dust effect is going to be blast, healing, or poison, I believe, are the only option. So when you mark a target, the Kinsect is going to go towards it, and you can then generate these clouds of dust with the Kinsects when it hits a marked piece. The element is actually any of the elements, but not ailments, that you can put on a weapon, and you can add it to this Kinsect. The power is going to be the attack power, speed is going to be how quickly it flies, and the healing level is going to be how much health it brings back when you are extracting a green buff. One of the easiest ways to mark is to go up to a monster and you can right trigger and then just, he hit the wrong one but it's not his fault. So as you can see he, it is now generating blast clouds and this makes it so that whenever I hit these they're going to explode and do some more damage. So again there are health clouds I believe and poison clouds. If you mark a target the Kinsect will go out on its own and attack these and you'll notice its stamina does go out pretty quick, so you're going to have to keep an eye on that. Alternatively, if you do not want to walk up to a monster to do that, you can aim at the monster and hit right trigger. This is going to shoot a pod, and it's going to be something that your Kinsect can follow and attack wherever the pod lands. And as always, to cancel this, you can hit B and it will recall, and if you send it back out again, it will not attack the marked area. And now let's talk about the third way to mark. This is actually going to be a vaulting attack, and it's actually a really fun attack to use. So, while we're up in the air, we're going to vault and then hit right trigger. This is going to make us dive, and the second attack right there, the second sweep, the final hit, is actually going to be there to mark targets. So, the final piece that we need to talk about for attacks is going to be a claw. So, while we're up in the air, instead of hitting right trigger, we'll hit left trigger, and that is going to 
grapple us. It is going to go straight down on the monster, and if it lands, we're going to be grappled to whatever part of the monster we hit. So as you can see, this is a light weapon, so we are going to be making slinger ammo. And the slinger ammo in here is actually going to be something that we can use to our advantage. So the slinger ammo here that we generate off the monster is going to be pretty important. It's going to help us a little bit. It's going to buff our kinsect a little bit. There's going to be two types of buffs that we can give our kinsec. This is going to be a spirit buff, which is the one I prefer, or a power buff. So when we pick up slinger ammo, we can use it to charge our kinsect. And this is going to do something really important as well as buff it. So let's go ahead and take any slinger ammo. Let's pick up stone. And from the attack, we're going to aim. And now we're going to hit Y and B. This is going to do a Kinsect charge and as you can see I now have a much longer stamina bar on the Kinsect and I have a yellow Kinsect icon. So using stone I actually gave myself a spirit charge. So the other one is a power charge and it will be similar but it will be red. The power charge is going to give the Kinsect 1.5 times raw damage, 3.5 times elemental, and 1.15 dust power. This is going to increase the green buff health regen as well as decrease the time between the amount of dust you produce. This also extends the individual extract duration by 50%. So power is very good for if you're using your kinsect and attacking with it a lot. You're throwing it into your combos and marking targets so that the kinsect can do its own thing because it's going to do a little bit more damage. But the reason I like spirit is because I don't really use my kinsect a whole bunch. Like I said, it's just for extracts. And the spirit one, in my opinion, is a little bit better, and this is why. So it's going to double the Kinsect's maximum stamina and its stamina regeneration rate, as well as extend all extract duration by 50%, including the triple buff. So that's the reason I like that one a lot more. It's going to increase the triple buff duration by 50%, and sometimes that Slinger ammo is a little bit easier to find. So as far as power pods that are going to give us the power charge, the Dragon Pod is going to be a power for two and a half minutes. And then the Thorn Pod, Piercing, and Bomb Pod are also going to be power for five minutes. So if we look at Stone, this is going to give us the Spirit Buff for a minute and 15 seconds. Red Pit is going to give us a Spirit for a minute 30. Bright Moss, Crystal Burst, Torch Pod, and Scatter Nut are going to give us Spirit for two minutes. And Puddle Pod finally is going to give a spirit for 2 minutes and 30 seconds. I like to use their stone or red pit because they're super easy to find. And then we can attack different areas of the monster. And you'll notice something weird here. So when I send it out, I'm actually only using half of the Kinsect in the top left corner. So if I send it out again, I can now have white and red on the extract. If I bring that back... I will have white and red together. I'd already grabbed red and orange right before I explained that to you, but I now have all three, and since I have a spirit charge, my extract duration is going to be increased by 50%. This also makes it easier for producing dust, because you can mark a target, and your Kinsec can stay away from you for twice as long now. Sheathing your weapon will automatically always bring it back to you. Let's go ahead and talk about the Insect Glaive bonus. So the bonuses are going to be dependent on what glaive you have. So there's going to be Elemental Boost, which is the one I have, is going to increase the elemental damage of a Kinsect. As I showed you, I don't have an element on this Kinsect, so it does not do anything for me right now, but I do not use this weapon very often. I use the Fatalis one. Speed boost is increasing the flying speed of the Kinsect and does not attack more often within the same period than others. Stamina boost is going to increase the speed of stamina regeneration, and it, but it does not attack for longer than normal. Health boost is going to increase its healing potency. Elemental boost, as I said, is going to increase the damage of Kinsect. The elemental damage of Kinsect. Sever boost is going to increase slicing damage, and blunt boost is going to increase blunt damage. You can only use those on their respective Kinsect types. So like I said, my Kinsect is a Sever type. Spirit and Strength Boost. Charging your Kinsect with any Slinger ammo gives both power and spirit bonus. Personally, I think that's a really good one to use. And then Stamina and Healing is increases Kinsect Stamina Recovery Speed, Stamina Uptime, and Extract Healing Potency. So those are all of the types that you have. Make sure to look at that so you can build your Kinsect to be the way you want it. Again, this is a light weapon, so we're going to be doing a lot of little attacks very quickly and we're going to get slinger ammo and our slinger ammo can then be used for 
mostly for a power buff, and any slinger ammo that we find on the ground can be used for our spirit buff. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the skills. Alright, so while we're going over the skills, keep in mind tremor resistance, earplugs, and also windproof. We're going to get back to those here pretty soon. So power prolonger is a skill that you can use with insect glaive. It is going to be 1.4 times the insect duration. So you can definitely use this if you want, but I do not recommend it because there are other ways to increase the duration of your buffs and they're actually really easy to get back when you're on a quest. So I do not recommend this unless you want to have a lot higher uptime on your buffs. All right, so let's look at Airborne. This is going to be another one point skill and it's going to increase the aerial damage that you do by 30%. This is going to be really helpful for Insect Glaive, especially if you're an aerial player, because I think as of right now, it was at least in base game. I'm not sure if they changed it in Iceborne, but in base game, being on the ground did more damage than being in the air. So having this skill will definitely help you out a little bit, especially with the way that values work in this game. Mounting is similar to an ailment where you have to build it up over time by the amount of damage that you do in the air. So this is also going to make it a little bit easier to mount. So Master Mounter and Jump Master are also going to be pretty good ones to have. Master Mounter is going to make it easier to not only mount the monster getting on it, but it's also going to be easier to topple the monster bringing it down. Jumpmaster is going to prevent attacks from monsters from knocking you out of the air whilst you are up there. And finally, Flinch Free is going to be a special skill. So this is going to prevent knockbacks and tripping. But as you can see in the description, it's going to increase some Kinsect Extract effects. So, one of the things that is inherent with this skill is back in the orange buff, we have a damage reaction reduction. This is going to increase the knockback reduction to, I believe, most attacks. Now, something it doesn't tell us about this skill three skills i told you to keep in mind earlier were the earplugs wind resistance and tremor resistance so level three this is going to add three points of all of those skills when you have triple buff active a little disclaimer here this is all over the internet and there's so many different answers for what this skill does but the most common answer is that the flinch free levels give you one point per level of earplugs, wind resistance, and tremor resistance when the triple buff is active. Now earplugs and I believe wind resistance both go up to level 5, so if you just slot in two extra points, those three skills will all be maxed as well every time that you have triple buff, which should be 100% uptime or as close as you can get it to. Let's go ahead and look at some gameplay.